So, while I don't know if it makes my kind of top five or top six list of favourite TV shows, I've always harboured a little bit of a guilty pleasure for Red Dwarf. For those who don't somehow don't know, Red Dwarf is a British kind of sitcom set in outer space where while there have been a few numerous kind of reshufflings of the cast over the past few years, the favourite of the cast for is the last remaining human being alive, Dave Lister, played by Craig Charles, who's he's the last remaining human in the universe, except unlike most other he, last ever humans, he's a slob. He's a sloth, he doesn't like working, he drinks beer most of the day, and he's just generally lazy. You've also got the hologram ghost of his former bunkmate, uh, Arnold J. Rimmer, played by Chris Barry, who's kind of an uptight jerk. The descendants of his, a descendant of his pet cat, simply called The Cat, played by Danny John Jules, and a mechanoid they pick up along their travels called Crichton, played by Rob Llewellyn. And as I said, while I don't know if it would make my kind of top ten, I definitely harbour a little bit of a kind of a love for Red Dwarf, and it's certainly a guilty pleasure. So two days ago we got a feature-length episode of Red Dwarf, two hours long, titled Red Dwarf The Promised Land. On from this one, well... Now, before I get into the actual story of this, we have to kind of go back all the way to the beginning of Red Dwarf, which I admit I haven't actually seen. I haven't seen kind of the earlier stories of Red Dwarf. I mean, I the earliest I've probably seen is about kind of series six, maybe five. But yeah, essentially, the reason why this whole chain of events set off is because Dave Lister smuggled his pregnant pet cat aboard at the start of the voyage. Once the cat's found, since he refuses to have it put down, he gets punished by being put into stasis, and while he's in stasis, a radiation leak kills the entire crew. But eventually the, but the cats are safe in the hole, and they eventually evolve into something approaching humanoid. Before eventually kind of leaving the ship and travelling, being dispersing throughout the universe with the only one remaining being the character of Cat, played by Danny John Jules. A kind of self-centred cat person who pretty much just acts like, just like a cat. Now, The Promised Land focuses once again on the crew as they are seemingly forced to evacuate the ship when they try to reboot the, sh the ship's computer, Holly, played once again by Norman Lovett, who has seemingly been lost several seasons earlier. They try to reboot Holly from his backup drive, only for to find that his backup is kind of the uh, personality he had at the start of the voyage, and as a result of this he doesn't know who they are, he doesn't recognise them as crew, and therefore says that since the crew aren't here, and everything's kind of, the, the ship serves no purpose anymore, and so he's going to destroy the ship and essentially kick them out. The crew manage to make it aboard their ship Starbuck and head off to try and find themselves a new ship, to which they eventually find one in the form of an abandoned ship called the Iron Star, which does come with an upside for Rimmer in that it comes with a diamond light hologram unit, which seemingly gives him the ability of, well, superhero-like abilities, so, yeah, such as laser abilities from his hands and to be able to travel anywhere pretty fast only because he neglects the safety concerns, safety regulations, it ends up draining quite a lot of his power and he's set to go low dev mode for most of it. But also on the Iron Star they find three descendants of the original cats, named Sol, played by Tom Bennett, Luna, played by Amanda Dillon, and Peanut, played by Lucy Pearman. And they seemingly come from a society ruled over by a man, that, by one of the cats named Rodan. Now Rodan seeks to destroy any cat that is that doesn't kind of bow down to him, who looks up to some greater force than him. He wants to be the ultimate power of, of the cat people, and so these three, so Sol, Luna, and Peanuts have managed to escape, 
and upon meeting the crew of Red Dwarf, since they seemingly developed a religion focused around Lister, referring to him as the Cloister. So it's a job for them, and they believe that he is going to perform some mass miracle and possibly get them towards the Promised Land. So it's a it's kind of a job for them to find, either find themselves a new home or find their way back to Red Dwarf, survive along the way, and ultimately help the cats to get back to the Promised Land. Now, as I said, well, I don't know if Red Dwarf would make my top ten, okay, with the modern age of television that we do have. I, I do harbour a bit of... I do harbour a love for it. I mean, it Red Dwarf is one of these series that's just so completely off the wall that... It's unbelievable. I mean, one thing that I have found in the past few years was, I'll I'll possibly leave a link to it down below, but there's a video somewhere of Patrick Stewart, who he can return to Britain after filming Star Trek The Next Generation, and while looking through his channel one night, he managed to find Red Dwarf, and he thought at first it was a blatant parody of Star Trek. But as he was about to call his lawyer to go get the ball rolling, Something happened in the show that finally made him laugh, and it's just like, okay, this, 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 this could be different. So he left the telephone where it was and continued watching it, the show, and he found himself really enjoying it. And you know what? I must find that to it. I mean, the show is so completely bonkers that honestly, you've got to love it. I mean, from some of the early adventures, like meeting Jesus Christ, having. Uh, realities where everything you don't decide happens, or just waking up to find the reality you think you've been having for the past few years is actually a computer game that you've been playing for the past four years. Red Dwarf is kind of crazy, and I feel The Promised Land certainly reflects that. I mean, it's got the characters you all love in there. Craig, Dave Lister, Cat, Arnold, Crichton, even Holly. That... They're all brilliant in there, but then they also do some really good stuff with it. And it's impossible not to love the you know, three cat people in that they're constantly saying to Lister, uh, listen, do you think you can perform another kind of miracle? To just Things are getting pretty dark down here. So, you know what, that would be nice. I mean, he tries to explain to them very early on that I'm not actually a god before Crichton kind of pulls him aside and says, yeah, look, the, their faith is pretty much all they have, and if you tell them that you're not actually a god, it's gonna kind of destroy them. So that so it's just like yeah, just trying to go pass off the use of god to the entire thing. I mean, they even managed to do one really funny moment with Danny John Jules, where Lister th thinks that ideally he has to tell them he's not actually a god, so he sends Crichton in to go tell them. And Crichton go says, Lister, Lister is the most wonderful man I've ever met. It's like, no, I can't do it. It's like, okay, I'll send Cat in. He'll be able to tell them what a nobody I am. And so Cat goes in, it's like, what, do, what exactly do you think is so godlike about Lister? And then when they start explaining to him, suddenly he converts. He's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, Damn it, they converted him. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I don't think I can really do Red Dwarf justice by how I describe it. You'll have to go and see it for yourself and just have some fun with it. But, of course, this is a feature-length episode. Two hours long, as opposed to something like 25 minutes that a typical episode would have. But I think it just has a load of fun with it. Do I think this is the end of Red Dwarf? Honestly, no. Because we had, a few years ago, we had series 12. Now we've had Red Dwarf The Promised Land, and from the ending that we give, get with this, which I won't spoil here, I honestly don't think this is something they can end on. I mean, yeah, it's a fun episode, once again, it's a fun time, but it doesn't really f feel like the kind of thing of, okay, we're leaving Red Dwarf behind now, we're never going to do it again. I mean, no, I mean, if the actors are still willing to go through what they have to get into the costumes and have makeup done and come back to the set, I think this series could continue for another long time. I mean, it doesn't feel like the promised land is something to end on. Yeah. So, honestly, I love the promised land. I think it's a very funny addition to the Red Dwarf universe, but I don't think it's really something they can leave on. And you know what? I hope to see in a few years another Red Dwarf whether it be a series 13 or whether it be just another feature-length episode. But, you know what, I'd love to see more of it. And if you haven't checked out Red Dwarf yet, what are you doing? Just go and watch it and have some fun.
That's when I think of Red Dwarf the Promised Land. The next up will either be my review of Injustice Gods Among Us or The Day of the Doctor. I'll have to wait and see which one it is. Until then, see ya.